Hi guys, welcome to another Road Pilgrim car review and today we have the all new BMW i4 eDrive 35 on review with us today. And um, this is actually a all new variant uh, that is slightly different from the initial launch car which was an eDrive 40. So for today's review, what we're going to do is that we are going to take a look around the exterior of the car and highlight some of the differences from the eDrive 40. And then obviously we're going to go jump inside, check out some of the interior features and then we're going to go take the car for a drive as well. But before we get on with the review, if you are a driver in Singapore, be sure to check out the links in the description box below because through those links we can actually help you to sell your used car or consign your used car for the best price possible and uh, it's completely free to inquire so be sure to check out that link if you are interested um, aside from that we are also able to help you to renew your car insurance um, with side-by-side -side comparisons from some of the best car insurance companies in Singapore so check out those links if you if you require uh, any of these resources and uh, with that let's get on with the review all right so jumping straight into the review this is the exterior of the i4 e drive 35 and this car for those of you who are not familiar with the i4 at all this is actually bmw's luxury sports coupe and as you can see it's a pretty handsome looking car but there are some differences between this e drive 35 version and the initial E drive 40 version so the first and most obvious difference of course is the fact that this car that you see in front of you does not come with the M Sport body kit anymore and what it comes with is the regular style body kit which I think looks a little bit cleaner and a little bit more uh, elegant so to speak so obviously if you are into the entire uh, super sporty look you will prefer the m sport body kit but um generally speaking if you're using this car as a um if you're buying this car more as a luxury sh luxury item or luxury uh, aspect of your lifestyle uh instead of a sports car then uh uh, I think this looks very very elegant indeed and um, aside from the body kit what you also get are these all new aero design wheels which are 19 inches there you go at the back as well these are 19 inches however this is done in a staggered setup as with most 19 inch wheels um, in the market uh, most nine most cars that come with 19 inch wheels will come in a staggered setup so this is not so surprising and um, what you will also see on the side skirt here is that previously the eDrive 40 came with a gloss black side skirt here but the eDrive 35 comes with a matte black uh, side skirting not to say one is better than the other, they're just a little bit different and um, today's review is just kind of to highlight some of these differences here. Um, for those of you who don't know, this car, although it looks like a regular sedan, is actually a lift back, which brings some conveniences to the consumer. So as you can see, the entire back portion of the car, including the rear glass panel, opens up. And what you get is a fairly sizable boot. It's not the largest one in the industry, but it will comfortably fit most of the items that you need. And most importantly, I think, because it's a lift bag, what you get is a very nice loading aperture, which makes it actually easier for you to load things into the car as compared to a regular sedan. So with that, let's jump inside, jump into the driver's seat, and I'll show you some of the interior features on the BMW i4. All right, so this is the cabin of the BMW i4 eDrive 35. And if you can hear a bit of buzzing going on, it's because the air conditioning has been running on pre-conditioned uh, settings. And that's because it's a rather hot day outside and I've actually set the car to pre-condition uh, the cabin before I actually step in and do this re re review. So the car is already nice and cool. And uh, these are just some of the little luxury features that you get on a BMW that I think are quite nice but aside from that let me start up the car so there you go the car is started up and to walk you through the cabin so that was the uh, that's the dash cam now that now that is done talking i i can do my little spiel 
on the cabin. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, to get started on the interior uh, of the i i4, um, I think the most prominent feature of all is obviously the infotainment unit and the digital driver's display. So what you get here is an integrated curved display that runs OS 8. And for those of you who are not familiar with um, OS 8, basically uh, the main differences is that there are some changes to the way the widgets are displayed. As you can see here, um, and being an EV, um, I probably haven't mentioned that it is fully electric, but it is fully electric. Uh, for those of you who don't know that the i4 is fully, fully electric, and it shows you some of your uh, last, uh, all your charging values, all your, um, uh, elect all, all your charge related information as one of the widgets as well. And of course, you can customize this by adding widgets. Um, and uh, the main menu actually covers quite a large and extensive range of features including your interior lighting, you've got your weather, radio, charging, uh, BMW assistance. Um, basically, it has this whole range of little features and widgets that are now available in one view, just like that. Um, moving across to um, the screen right in front of me, this is actually the digital driver's display and this also has an OS 8 specific uh, display um, which shows you of course different, uh, different bits of information. In default setting, uh, being an EV, what it shows you is your power usage which is represented in the form of a percentage and basically the harder you step then the closer it gets to 100%. Um, and then of course you've got your speedometer. There's no longer a need for an uh, ref counter now because this is an EV. And of course this can be changeable. You can actually change the setup of your screen depending on what you like because the center area between the two dials are actually customizable. So using your multi-function steering wheel here, you can actually um, put up different bits of content. So you can leave it blank or you can add things like your charging values. Um, you've got uh, sort of a directional gps -y, uh, sort of uh, display as well. Uh, you can bring up your maps. You can put up your music information. And this car actually comes with a head-up display as well, which of course you can't see from the angle. Um, but this heads-up display is also customizable. So you've got um, directional views, you've got plane, just just your speedo that's up there um, and then of course you can also put up uh, what's this here? This is there's a sports view um, but yeah I think in Singapore most of the time you'll just be using your speedo uh, unless you're the kind that uh, gets lost easily and needs to rely a lot on your GPS then I think your directional view will probably help you out a little bit um, but aside from that um, the rest of the cabin is actually pretty much the same as the E-Drive 40 and you've got this nice uh, uh, mesh aluminium effect on the dashboard here which I think is very pretty and very uh, in line with the styling and the type of car that the i4 is and then obviously you've got this um, aircon section here on the, on the dashboard and this is done in a very typical BMW styling. Build quality is absolutely awesome. Um, and I think that in terms of aircon positioning, uh, cars today, sometimes the aircon vents can be a little bit too far down, but in the i4, I think they are quite okay. Um, aside from that, you do have some additional buttons or, or um, sort of shortcuts, so to speak. You've got a volume knob here, you've got track selection, next and previous. Hazard lights are here, including your front and rear demister. And further down the center console, what you get is a wireless charging pad, two cup holders. Uh, this is the key right here, the key fob. Uh, you also get a uh, USB port right here, along with your 12 volt socket. And then further down your center console, which also features the this mesh aluminium effect, you have your uh, main control settings, which uh, have you, which uh, house your 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 drive selector, 
and your iDrive uh, knob here which you can use to of course control the infotainment unit while you are driving which I think is a little, a little bit easier than using a touch screen while you are driving and you do have to reach over a little bit so I think the iDrive knob is still a very very relevant and good addition to the car. Aside from that, of course, you've got your mode selectors, your Sport Comfort Eco Pro, Auto Hold, Traction Control, stuff like that. Um, for those of you who are not familiar, the new BMW Drive Selector system uh, doesn't have a park gear, so to speak. It's just a button to, to park and uh, um, to, to park the car. So after reversing or, or into the lot or something, you just press the park button and the car will go into park. Um, there is still a handbrake button uh, which you have to release when you drive off however yeah you also have to activate it when you park the car as well which I think to be honest this could already as in I think this is probably a feature that could be integrated into the park, parking gear when you disengage it and, and re-engage it I think um, the car can automatically put it go into um, activate its handbrake or not all right, um, in terms of seats, these are the brown Vanesca leather seats, which are absolutely beautiful. I think they are super, super nice, and they are also really, really comfortable to sit in. Um, there is an adjustable bolster, sort of a, I'm not sure if this is adjustable, but uh, these side bolsters really, really kind of hug your torso as you drive, so I think that's really pleasant, and um, it does, have some therapeutic effects as well because if you're big enough like me to actually you know press and fully utilize the width of the seats uh, as you kind of uh, drive long distances you actually get a little bit of a some back relief as well so i think all that is really nice so that's it for the front cabin uh, or the cabin or the driver's cabin or the, the front section of the car uh, we're now going to jump into the back of the car and check out the rest of the interior All right, so this is the rear of the BMW i4 and because it's a coupe, you do have to watch your head a little bit when you get into the car but that's not, a, that, that's not an issue that's specific to this car, it's an issue that, is, that, is, that pertains to all other coupes in the market. But aside from that, this driver's seat is in my regular driving position. And I do find that I'm sitting a little bit further back in this car as well. Uh, normally, I sit a little bit closer to the B pillar, but this one's a little bit further. But nonetheless, I do have adequate leg room in the rear. This isn't a super large car by any means, but I think at the rear, it's still quite comfortable. I still do have an adequate amount of um, adequate amount of leg room. And actually, for a coupe, I have a decent amount of headroom as well. It's actually not too bad. Um, but the design of the car does kind of slope in a little bit so uh, if you are extremely tall uh, I think sitting at the back might be a little bit of an issue for headroom uh, but otherwise if you are carrying kids at the back or maybe your wife is at the back or maybe your helper is at the back I don't think any of them will have any issues the seats the front seats are actually propped up on some uh, on the rails as well so you do have enough space to put your feet underneath a little bit which does help you to extend uh, your legs for a more comfortable seating position um the rear bench is a little bit low to the ground in my opinion um not that it's a major issue but because it's a little bit lower what you do get is an absence of high spot so um, I guess on longer journeys, this might just be a tiny bit more tiring, but otherwise, um, it's still a very nice and luxurious place to be. Even at the rear, soft touch leather, it's all around the car. Uh, you've got your Harman Kardon sound system right here. Um, so everything, very pretty. And of course, you have a rear air conditioning vent as well in the middle here, along with two USB ports so both your rear passengers can play with their phones to their heart's content without fear of um, batteries running out. Uh, this is a 
single zone, single zone-ish, um, as in it's not two separate zones, it's one zone at the back, which is um, which is still not too bad because uh, in other cars, what you get is probably just a blower without any sort of climate control setting. So this allows you to choose your temperature and even um, the choice of vents between the floor vent and the center vent. So that's I think that is I think quite useful. Um, aside from that, you've got some storage nets here for your usage, and you've got very distinct isofix points that you can use for the installation of a isofix car seat. Um, and these isofix covers are actually really nicely designed as well. They are. Um, you won't run the risk of losing them because they fold in very nicely into the assembly. You can slot your car seat in. And this passenger seat is actually pretty far back in my opinion. So if you've got a... I mean, say the regular passenger in that seat is... Uh, say your wife who maybe is about 160-ish centimeters tall. You probably uh, can push the seat quite a far bit forward and then you could house, quite comfortably house a rearward facing child seat at the back. So I think this car is still definitely usable as a family car. But if you are carrying four full-size adults, then I think it's probably um I I I think on longer journeys the rear of this car might feel a little bit cramped as well. And of course this is also um, the fact that this car has a dark colored roof lining also kind of makes the car feel a little bit tighter and smaller um, But I think that's all in line with the car being a sports coupe. I think it's It's an entire image is as such. So having the dark roof liner having the edgy shape having the uh, a Little bit more curved in roof line. I think all that blends in very well And obviously, you know if you are purchasing a car like that you are definitely looking for something that's aesthetically a little bit more pleasing Otherwise, if you're looking just for pure function, you'll probably go for something like the iX3 or even the newly launched i5, uh, which of course gives you quite a little bit more cabin space. Um, and obviously, you know, there are petrol powered uh, 4 series cars as well. So I think, you know, if you compare those two kind of demographics, I think this i4 is a lot closer to um, or more co closely caters to the 4 series route um, but aside from all that let's go take the car for a drive because it is a bmw after all where and uh, i think up on the roads is where it, is where it does its best work so let's jump back into the driver's seat and take the car for all right so now up on the roads in the bmw i4 e drive 35 and to get some facts and figures out of the way this E Drive 35 houses a 67 kilowatt hour battery pack, and from this, what is derived is about 282 horsepower, 400 newton meters of torque, which will get you from 0 to 100 in a claimed 6 seconds. Um, and with that, you also get a you also get a range of about 483 kilometers on a single charge. Now, six seconds, zero to 100 doesn't seem like an awfully quick time. And you know, to be very honest, I don't think the E-Drive 35 was actually uh, made to be a all-out performance car anyway, because for that purpose, they have the i4 M50, which of course is a much, much, much quicker car. But, um, what's important to note is that despite the 6 second time, the i4 e Drive 35 has a torque figure of about 400 newton meters, which is way more than a comparably priced petrol powered car. Later on, I'll show you some of the acceleration bits as well because it truly is quite fantastic. So if you're driving a car like that, um, you know, if you compare this to a petrol powered option, if you're spending about 300 over thousand dollars on a on a uh, luxury car, um, you probably get some fairly civilian specs uh, with the car, you know, nothing too groundbreaking. But with an electric option, what you get is this sort of acceleration. Whoa! That actually feels properly fast. Um, not that you should be driving like that around. Not that you should be driving like that 
um, all the time, but it's really quite a sensation. And I think in that sense, um, BMW have kept true to the promise of creating cars that um, are really, really driver-oriented. Because although they may not be specced for all-out performance, there are still always elements about the car that allow the driver to feel like that it's like it's a little bit fun to drive and it's very engaging to drive and I think you know if you if you think back to our one of our earlier reviews as well uh, of the 318 M Sport sedan um, even though that wasn't a particularly quick car um, everything else about the car in terms of its handling and its balance was just so wonderfully engaging uh, which really goes to show that with a BMW, you don't need it to be particularly quick for it to be fun and engaging to drive. And I think that's a story that has kind of translated into the i4 as well because um, although this car, like I've mentioned, isn't really specced out to be an all-out performance car, I think a lot of the handling aspects of the car have still been kept authentic and you do really still feel like you are in a proper BMW with proper... Uh, handling. If there's one tiny, tiny, tiny complaint that I have though is that I do feel like the suspension setup on this car might feel, might still be a little bit too soft in a sense. Uh, brakes feel a little bit soft as well. So when you do put the car under extremely heavy braking, you do get a little bit of lunging. But other than that, this is a car that is, um, to be honest, uh, extremely wonderful to drive around town in Singapore. And I think this will be a very nice setup to drive on longer journeys as well. Uh, for those of you who know me, um, I've always been a fan of lower slung cars, like, uh, I mean, not low slung in terms of like super low down sports cars, but um, between an SUV um, and a sedan or a Grand Coupe like this one, for example, um, I do have the tendency to feel like um, sedans and Grand Coupes are a little bit nicer to drive on longer journeys because when you do get up to higher speeds, um, the car being lower to the ground does make me feel a little bit more assured. Um, it just feels a little bit more secured and somehow you just get quite a lot less wind roll uh, from the car. So I think that is something that, um, you know, between this and an iX3 for a long distance drive, I would most likely gravitate towards something like that. So I think this is a really nice setup to have. And, you know, to be very honest, um, ever since the influx of EVs started flowing into Singapore. I think majority of the, the options have always been SUVs and I think even today, a vast majority of the options are SUVs and if you're looking for an all-out sedan or a Grand Coupe, you actually have fairly limited options. Um, so aside from the Tesla Model 3 um, and of course the upcoming BYD Seal which we will review very soon as well um, and then of course you've got your EQE which it's already a little bit jacked up. It sort of sits in the in-between space along with the Polestar 2 as well. Those are all like sort of a, a in-between. Uh, I think the i4 is the next proper, proper sedan or uh, grand coupe that you can buy in Singapore, which I think really will appeal to drivers like myself who prefer this sort of format, uh, especially on longer drives. And you know what? I think it looks a little bit cooler as well. So we're going to make this U-turn and then we're going to bring push the car a little bit more it just disappears so Oof. <laughs> extremely entertaining to drive in my books now um, being an electric car of course um, I think another point to note is that if you are looking for this this sort of torque figures and this sort of 0 to 100 speed uh, in a regular petrol power car, you'll most likely be buying a car that's um, a little bit more uh, performance oriented, like a, like maybe an M car, not really like a, full, like, like a full M spec car because those will be a little bit quicker than the i4. But generally speaking, you'll be looking at the performance range of cars and what performance range of cars um, offer you is obviously a lot of performance um, at higher speeds and, and under uh, heavy acceleration but for day-to-day -day town driving perhaps what they lack is a little bit of a like a comfort aspect to the car um, suspensions can be very stiff as well 
uh, and generally speaking they aren't a lot of fun to drive in start-stop traffic um, but with an i4 I feel like you kind of have the best of both worlds because when you want to push the car on an open road you've got all the instant torque available to you that you can use but when you just want to go about your day you know in sunny Singapore around the city when you're driving from in start stop traffic you've got an absolutely silent uh, drivetrain you've got nice amounts of comfort and the drivetrain um, is perfectly suited to drive in a city environment in start stop traffic as well because obviously you're not powering up a huge engine or a performance engine with a sports oriented transmission so I think this is really something um, if you are in the market for a sedan grand coupe shaped electric vehicle um, this is really something that you should look at because I think it offers the user quite a lot of flexibility in the way that they utilize the car so um, that's it for the review um, if I have missed out anything about the i4 that you wish to know please put your questions in the comments section below I will be more than happy to answer those questions for you um, if you are thinking about selling your used car in Singapore be sure to check out the links in the description box below because through those links we will be able to offer you the best possible valuation and code for your used car or help you to consign it as well and if you are in uh, the phase or in the time of year where you need to renew a car insurance be sure to check out the other link in the description box because what we'll be able to do for you is that through one inquiry form we'll be able to provide you a side-by-side -side comparison of all the best insurance quotes from all the leading car insurers in Singapore um, if you have enjoyed this video or if you have found it useful in any sort of way please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel because we've got new reviews coming out every single week it would be wonderful if you could join us for those reviews as well um, upcoming we've actually got the review of the BMW 330i Touring which is um, an, un an unassumingly good car so stay tuned for that review um, otherwise um, you know if not please uh, stay safe take care of yourself and we'll see you next time bye bye